Hey guys, Blazing Wrath here. Yes, I know, I am late to making a video about this, and as that old saying goes, better late than never, but I'm rather, I'm just gonna throw my opinions out there on the competitive settings of Halo Infinite and, you know, what I think about them. So with that being said, let's just get into this. So one of the first things 343 confirms for Halo Infinite's competitive settings is no motion tracker. And I definitely agree with this decision. Uh, especially since in past games, ex except Halo 5's ability tracker, uh, Halo's competitive settings always had no radar. So this is a this is a big W when when it comes for competitive play. Next thing on the list is that the battle rifle is going to be the starting weapon for competitive play. This to me sounds like a no-brainer and like an obvious choice that the battle rifle was going to be the competitive starting weapon. Um, because the sidekick has, well, it's it's really booty and the bloom kind of sucks. And then you have the commando, which uh, doesn't seem like a viable weapon, uh, starting weapon, especially with, uh, you know, its bloom. The battle rifle as your primary weapon and motion tracker being disabled are two great uh, decisions that I'm glad 343 made. Speaking of the battle rifle, there's a couple things I'd like to note during this gameplay. The first thing is that the skin, uh, the or the coating, whatever, that... Uh, L-Town is using here. I think this uh, weapon coding is part of the SR-152 uh, rank that you you can earn in Halo 5, which I did. It was not fun, and <laughs> and if you like this coding, then maybe grind for it. I don't know. It, it's up to you. This is definitely my color scheme, so I'm glad I grinded for it, and I'm definitely going to rock it when the game comes out. Another thing I'd like to point out about the battle rifle at the beginning of this game is that you start off with max ammo, or at least what it normally is max ammo, compared to like, you know, literally every other like Halo game. Uh, you start out with 108 rounds, which is the max ammo of the battle rifle. However, um, not only that, you can see L-Town, um, he can carry like 200 plus rounds, which it, the battle rifle has never held that many ammo, how much, never, has never held that much ammo before. Jesus, English is hard sometimes. This is not a huge deal per se, but you know, I'd rather have it, you know, just, uh, you only have like two spare uh, mags when you spawn with a battle rifle and then you have to pick up the rest. And, and I'm not sure how carrying over max ammo that the battle rifle usually carries is gonna play out. But again, I'm pretty sure it's not a big deal. It's just something I've noticed. The next thing I'd like to talk about is the grenades. So, grenade hit markers are turned off for competitive play. Now, personally, I would probably have hit markers overall, like, completely, like, removed from Halo Infinite. Like, especially how the shields work, where you definitely, like, glow a lot more in this game. And especially, 343 innovated pretty well with the shields, where wherever you shoot at, you know, at the opponent, their shields will glow wherever you shot. So, I would almost argue to remove hit markers entirely. And not just, you know, grenade hit markers turn off just specifically for competitive play. But that's just me, and I'm happy that grenade hit markers are turned off for competitive play. The next thing 343 confirmed is that friendly fire is turned on. Which is a weird thing to confirm, because friendly fire has always been, well, usually on in, in Halo games. But as we played in the technical test, that friendly fire is turned off. And not only that, we, we, we're still kind of lacking player collision, which is... I don't know, it's just weird. I think a cre I mentioned this in one of my videos once where I think the lack of player collision could create some maybe melee inconsistencies, but you know, just just food for thought. I really want player collisions back. It's just so weird just walking through your opponents or walking even through your teammates or you probably could create some unintended gameplay moments or whatever in during uh, matches. They probably have friendly fire turned off just to cater to the people new, the people who are new coming to the game, and as well as maybe, I don't know, maybe to prove 343 right or like kind of like a safety net considering uh, there's no more red versus blue. We have armor codings now, and everybody has their own different colors, so they probably want to play it safe at launch. Hopefully, maybe post launch we can have friendly fire turned on back, like entirely as like standard, and. The importance of friendly fire turned on is that a perfect example is throwing grenades or using any type of explosives. If you're firing at, at a hallway or something, or and your teammates are nearby, you gotta think twice. You know, like, do you shoot the rocket and kill your teammate and the opponent, or do you wait for your teammate to get out of the way and then shoot the rocket? You know, 
that kind of thought. It's not literally for griefing unless you're just an asshole. Lastly, the game modes that 343 confirmed that we're going to play on are Slayer, Capture the Flag, Stronghold, and Oddball. Now I have no problem with these uh, game modes being incompetitive at all. They're all pretty much standard. However, I, I do kind of wish we got King of the Hill back instead of Strongholds, but that's just kind of the classic Halo fan in me, like just wanting King of the, uh, King of the Hill back. I understand even playing Halo 5, if, um, Strongholds is a very competitive game type, and it's just even even uh, playing the game mode casually, it's it lead to, it leans towards competitive play. So I can see why they kept Strongholds in and made some, made a few changes as well. And that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about. Um, I guess one thing I want to mention that that uh, wasn't confirmed is that I kind of want to try sidekicks as secondaries. Now I know why they didn't they didn't have like secondaries for for the VR, and that's because th basically they want to just encourage just weapon pickups and whatnot to to place in your secondary. And I'd argue that I think you can still pretty much apply that with the sidekick as a secondary because. A good example is, while the sidekick isn't necessarily like a bad secondary, they're probably better secondaries. Like the the mangler, for example, like that you see L Town picks up, that, that's probably a better like hand cannon or even a utility weapon like the plasma pistol or disruptor, which are kind of like EMP weapons, like EMP handguns. You know, those might complement your battle rifle. You know, just small things like that. But that's pretty much the only thing I'd uh, I'd like to try out maybe later. Uh, post-launch of uh, Halo Infinite's uh, competitive play. I just, I want to try sidekicks of secondaries and see how it plays out. And that's going to do it for this video. So if you enjoyed, please leave a like and share this video with anyone who'd be interested. You can also follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash blazonwrath. And until next time, peace.